Hello. Okay. Well, they're all filming me, so I can say what I want. They're going to cut me out. So, anyway, can you start off by just saying your name and your position, please? Yeah, my name is Virag Kaufer, and I am the campaign strategist for Europe in uh, Greenpeace. Okay, and we're here at, in Strasbourg at the, at the World Forum for Democracy, and the theme this year is Can uh, Democracy Save the Environment? What do you think? I think if anything can save the environment, that will be democracy, that will be people power. Uh, maybe that's not a surprise to you to hear from uh, Greenpeace, uh, but we really believe that uh, change comes from uh, people. People are pushing the bar, people are, are really setting the tone uh, for, uh, for politicians. Uh, so it's really essential that people can raise their voice and they can protest if they don't like something. And, and do, do you think that um, a forum like this, a, a debating forum, here or elsewhere in the world can actually result in any concrete action on the environmental front or is it just a talking shop? Well, um, one of the themes in this forum is what is concrete action, uh, what is concrete action at the local level, what is concrete action at the international level. I personally and also as an organization, uh, Greenpeace believes in multilateralism. We believe in the fact that nations uh, talk to one another, cultures uh, talk to one another and of course there are lots of issues like climate change or uh, uh, global poverty that cannot be resolved uh, within a nation state and I think that's what the Council of Europe is really important for uh, and these kind of events are really important for, for international exchange. Whether it's going to result in concrete actions, I certainly think that it inspires people. Um, after um, the plenary discussion today, a lot of young people came up to me, uh, asked more questions. They looked like inspired, they looked like the, there was some spark in their eyes. So certainly they take home something from here and that's the most important. And what are you personally doing here? What, are you, what do you hope to achieve by being here in Strasbourg at this forum? Um, well, I am here because um, I believe in uh, such uh, discussions and I also think that Greenpeace has a role to play in these discussions. Um, Greenpeace as an organization um, always comes with a very uh, radical agenda, with something very straightforward. We also tend to think of ourselves that we are pushing the bar um, uh, in public discussions. And I think there is a lot to talk about in Europe when it comes to why are we not, why is we are a major democracies in most of European countries, why are we not doing enough uh, to stop climate change? Uh, so there is a lot of uh, undercurrent. And one of the things that I've been uh, talking about uh, in the panel was that um, I think no matter whether you talk about a democracy or a non-democracy, um, if there is too much collusion between politics and business, then the interest of the elite, uh, in some countries the oligarchs, will dominate uh, the public discourse and policy making, and that is really a problem. So, and that's, that's the thing in Europe as well. Um, despite the fact that Europe is very um, uh, developed in, um, in many ways, uh, what we have seen since 2019, since uh, Greta Thunberg established the, um, the Fridays for Future movement and millions of young people are on the street for more radical climate action. What we've been seeing is that there was a lot of greenwashing and a lot of big industry coming in. Of course we can make a difference, you know, we will make this net zero pledge and that net zero pledge and this is how we're going to offset what we are doing, but we don't want to change what we do. If you were to name uh, a region, a country, a continent, which, was, which you, in your view is doing the most to combat uh, climate change, and a region, country or continent which is doing the least, which is the, the worst in the class on the climate change front, what would you, how would you respond to that? Uh, well, I would turn it on its head and I would say that um, uh, the small island states are doing a lot They're, because they are also challenging the whole world uh, because their life is on the front. And I think countries like the UK and Germany are not doing enough at all uh, in, uh, compared to their privilege and their wealth and uh, technological develop, uh, development. So I think that uh, Europe can do a lot more to, uh, to really stand up for not just the historic responsibility, but also for looking into the future. Um, and there is a reason why a lot of European young people are uh, marching in Glasgow and, uh, and other places. They just had enough. 
Which brings me to my, my last question. You said in, in the plenary forum that um, the kids on the street protesting in Glasgow on Fridays, etc., uh, they're protesting, they're calling for what would be an ideal world where climate change has been stopped or slowed down, etc. And then you come to policy making on the part of governments or UN or, or whatever, and then that's when compromise kicks in. And so you've got the the ideal world that the kids are calling for and the reality of, of, of policy making, the compromise of policy making. So how do they, how do they, how do you progress when you've got that dichotomy? Well, you progress exactly like this, that there are always someone who is pushing the bar. I used to be a politician, so I know that uh, when you're in politics, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, negotiation, a lot of compromise. And you also realize that society is very diverse and complex. Uh, but that should not stop you from actually asking for the maximum that you can get. Um, and I think that's what um, uh, green activists, um, uh, social justice activists are doing. And that certainly makes a difference. Just think about uh, what Greta Thunberg achieved um, in the world. Uh, in the, in alone, almost alone. Uh, and uh, in a few years' time, she really rewritten uh, the whole story around climate action. Any final comments before we end the interview? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, nothing really. I, I'm just really inspired by, um, yeah, I think I have something to say. Um, we continue to have the conversation uh, with the panelists um, at dinner. We talked about uh, climate anxiety uh, of young people as mothers. It's a really inspiring space to be in. Uh, and I'm at already, um, in just a few hours, a lot of great people who really care about um, the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Can I just hold you there for a minute or two till they checked out and that was recorded properly? Because if not, we'd have to do the whole thing again. <laughs>